Okay, so this might end up part two. I don't know how long I've waffled on for, but now you see this side is all lighting when it wasn't before. So make sure they all light when you touch them. These little tags here are the diodes. Now on this side, none of them should light. If one of them lights and you've got bad diode, you need to replace the diode pack, which means unsoldering the um, wires that lead to it and redoing it. So now, next thing you check is that you haven't got continuity between your windings and ground. So first of all, just scratch around. You should have it between them. You will have it between them. There's no question about that. But just basically test each wire. So you'll clip this onto each of these wires, then scratch around the ground and make sure that there's nothing. And then what you do, if the if the lamp does light, it means your state of windings or as long as that's not touching anywhere, it shouldn't be your diodes. But if you've got a bad diode, then you're um, definitely going to have bad readings as far as this goes. So now next what I'll do is find the earth lead, which is this one here. So I'll just turn that down light back on. That's a bit better. Um, and I'll test the resistances between the earth and all the other ones. And then write them down here. So there's only, you'll only end up with three resistance values. So see if I can get the camera angle with that. Yeah, that's pretty good. So we'll get our multimeter. Probably can't see in there very well. Um, so there's the first one I'll try. Them. So the first one is 0 0.2 ohms. Which next one is 0 0.2. The next one is um, Ooh. Next one's oh no, 0 0.2. So they're all good. And then just test them to each other. Um, it should all be 0 0.2, or it should all be the same value. As long as they're all the same value, that's all right. Whatever the value may be, it doesn't matter. Just as long as they're all the same. So because this is a 85 amp alternator, it has more winding, so it's going to be a high value. But so long as it's all the same. So that's basically testing the electric side. Um, and then what you do is also test from those points to earth so find a good earth which I'm going to have trouble doing because this is very rusty well, it's not very rusty, it's a bit rusty so it should have nothing, no resistance to earth I mean it should have, you know, it shouldn't have any um, you know, value, it should stay as a open circuit you can do the same between one, you know, this test resistance is to earth, so that one's all good. So is this one here, I think I showed before I did it. Um, the resistance is to earth. It's a good enough angle, so you can stick one probe on here, one on earth, zero, zero, and of course between them was 2.4, 2.5, it wandered a little bit, depending on where you have the leads on that surface. Alright, so that's basically testing the resistances and if all your resistances are within specifications then it all should be a good work alternator, theoretically. Now the next thing you need to do is check that your slip rings are a nice machine surface, which these most definitely are not. So you can see there's a big mountain towards this end. So what I'll do is I'll chuck them in a lathe and I'll just machine it back. If you want to go the bodgy approach you can give your sandpaper in your hand and just um, rotate it, make sure you use a bit of RP7 or similar and change your sandpaper often. Um, I've done that a lot in the past and it's worked but it's not the way to do it. Really the way is to stick this end in a really what you should do is you should centre drill it. Um, this end here, a small centre drill, do it between centres in a either a lathe or a cylindrical grinder if you can get your hands on a cylindrical grinder. Which most people won't be able to so anyway so now the next thing when you're going to reassemble is what I'll do is I'll get a drill with a wire brush in it, polish all these housings up even though that's not going to help their um, actual 
alternator itself. Then what you do is on all these um, surfaces here, sand it down with a bit of sandpaper or with whatever it may be, so that it's all nice clean metal surfaces. Something in there. Make sure that's all nice clean metal surface, so that when all the parts go back together, they all go back together properly and um, you know have a good continuity. So we'll do that and then we'll go and put it back together. And I'll talk about regulators, which this is a brand new one. That's a score. So anyway, we'll do that. Okay, so <clears throat> I've just polished up the parts. They're not that polished. They're just clean. Um, as you can see, they're pretty shiny. They're good enough for now. I made sure I, in the these sides here, I made sure there was no corrosion on that. Um, and the same here. It's all the surfaces that act as grounding points. Now make sure you have one insulating washer at the bottom, one over the um, shaft and you can slip it back on. Now try not to bend the stator um, leads too much. Now you want to pull that up so it's all the way up. Now get your other insulating washer which goes there and then you should have a few spring washers, whatever. Um, that one can come out and you can do that back up so now all I'll do is I'll just do all the screws put all the screws back in there do everything up that's these three screws um, I'll get everything rigid edge okay so it's all back together everything's back on um, I tightened that up in the same way I untightened it in the vise so now the regulators these bushes in this regulator are quite um, good condition. I'll just drop the screw. Hang on a second. Oh well, I'll find that in a minute. Um, I'll just grab another one out of the tray. Um, oh, that'll do, I think, is it? Yeah. So anyway, um, regulators, as long as your brushes are pretty good, um, this one's a brand new one, or very recent one. But if your brushes look alright, if they've got they're nowhere near the wear line, so the start of that circle there is the wear line, um, they'll be alright to reinstall. Uh, testing them will be a completely different video because they're quite complicated to test. You need a variable power supply and that sort of thing. Best way to test them is to put them in the vehicle, and when you're running, you should have somewhere between 14. 0.5 and 15.5 volts at the most or 15 volts at the most um, depending on where what the charge load is if it's a fully charged battery then um, at 2500 rpm you should have between 14.25 and 14.55 for this particular alternator so that basically finishes this video um, it's going to end up two videos I think because it's pretty damn long but anyway the rain's getting harder, but at least I've done something tonight. Um, so yeah, I'm happy with this. I'd be happy to put it into any car. I wouldn't sell it as reconditioned, I'd sell it as serviced, and I'd polish it up a bit more before I sold it. But anyway, and I'd um, put the slip rings in a lathe and do them properly, but anyway. That's basically how to service your alternator. The one thing to take, pay attention to is um, if they're not seal bearings, grease them, otherwise they'll be alright. So thanks for watching, see you later.